Welcome to another episode of Fresh Brewed Kentucky Politics. I thank you guys for joining me. Once again, please hit that share button for me. Uh, hit, hit the share button there. Facebook, of course, as you guys know, is throttling us, holding us back. So go ahead and hit that share button. If you're listening to this on the podcast form, please, please, please turn to the person next to you and say, hey, listen to this. And if you're listening to this on a restream on YouTube or Facebook, I invite you to listen to our podcast form. It's available on, on Apple and uh, the Spotify and all those wonderful, great platforms. we got a lot of things to cover for you guys today. We're having Tony Wheatley join us from Constitutional Kentucky. He's going to talk a little bit about what they're all about, what they got going on. Tony Wheatley's a, a friend of ours, um, and he's been in this fight for a long time. He's been suing the governor for over, I, I think, a year now, going on a year now. Um, and so he will be joining us. Then we'll be talking about a, a few things, changed with Facebook, John Cena, and, of course, this wonderful Salon article I read that is just pure, pure, unadulterated garbage. So I thank you guys for joining us. Please go ahead, hit that share button for us, and we will get into it. Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Can you hear us, Tony? Oh, okay, there you go. How are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Oh, I can't complain. I can't complain. So, so everybody knows if you are hearing, um, if you are hearing a cat meowing in the background with Tony, he had just neutered a cat and he is not happy about it. He's in another room, but apparently he's real mad that he can't go see his girlfriend across the street anymore. And he's decided to take it out on our wonderful podcast. So, you know, sorry for the meowing if you hear it, but you'd be meowing too if you were just neutered. So <laughs> anyways, going into it, Tony, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, Constitutional Kentucky, what you guys are all about? Well, first of all, we like to neuter the governor, but that's beside the point. Uh, <laughs> Constitutional Kentucky, uh, we got started really to pass out constitutions and get them back into the schools. Since we started roughly yeah, a year and a half ago, we've passed out 10,000 constitutions to, to schools, to individuals, uh, to groups. And uh, that was our purpose. But then, you know, the governor come along and started uh, doing things that were just constantly illegal. And, and we decided to step up and do a little more and uh, harass him a little bit. And uh, with lawsuits and things like that, I think it, I think it has taken its toll to some extent. Uh, but it's also taking us off our, off our game a little bit. And so we've kind of got back into it. So. Well, and so you had a couple lawsuits you did too. So people understand what, what Tony is. The only reason why the Liberty people in Kentucky could protest for the last about year, like I said, about eight, nine months, is because Tony Wheatley tried to hold a protest in Frankfort, Kentucky, and was quickly – um, the, the governor wouldn't allow it. He took him to court, sued him, and was able to uh, win that case and put an injunction on the governor to stop them from being able to stop any protest. So a lot of these great uh, protests that we've been able to put on, uh, the very fact that Tony has been there is fantastic um, because it means that the governor cannot legally <laughs> stop a protest. We don't got to fill out any permits. There's no free speech zones. He's been injunctified from doing that. But, um, so that's a big thank you to you, Tony, as well. I know that you probably weren't ever having to plan on suing the governor for your right to protest. Were you? No, I hadn't planned on it, but, uh, you know, you do things you have to do. And, and unfortunately he stood in the way of, of freedom and we're just not going to put up with that. So. I mean, certainly not. I mean, it's quite clear. It's there in the First Amendment. Of course, he did it with the churches. He did it with the travel ban. He's done it with a couple different things. I think um, that's certainly the case. But you have an event going on here in Kentucky. Uh, you want to tell us about that real quick? Sure. Uh, it's called the Conservative Leadership Conference. And uh, one of the questions that we had every time that we went out, and uh, we do a lot of town halls, and one of the questions people ask is, how can we get involved? What can we do? And uh, a lot of times it's just because they don't have the confidence in, to do things. So, so we decided that we would put together a conference with uh, some great people that, that have been in the trenches and uh, they can teach others how to do things. You know, everybody knows Brother Lee Watts. You know, he, he talks about being a Christian and, and how to deal with the, uh, uh, the liberal 
left that we're dealing with. Uh, we have a Dr. Camille Towns, who is our education director, who will be speaking on how to deal with your school boards. Okay, those are things that we need to be contact contested on right now and, and get in there and, and take some places. We also have a, a great guy and, and Chris Weist. Everybody knows who he is. Uh, he'll be talking about the uh, legal issues and politics and things like that. Uh, Leland Conway will be here to discuss cancel culture, which is uh, how to deal with some, some of that. And of course we have uh, Kim Kate Kalik or Kasich. Uh, sorry, I've I always mess her name up, but she's out of Baltimore and she raised a lot of money in a short time to run uh, with the help of Trump. So uh, she's going to come here to Kentucky and kind of show what she did to to offset the uh, the liberal left that she had to deal with up there. So and then Cameron Mills and then, of course, Angela Mentor, if you've ever listened to her, she is a firecracker and she'll talk about leadership with her. Uh, I think it's. Uh, Sisters, I can't remember exactly what the name of the group is, but it, it has to do with they deal with abortion and things like that. So it's a great opportunity to uh, get involved in some of these groups. And we have a breakout sessions for them. We have speakers. We have we have uh, exhibitors who other groups that will be able to be you can go, go talk to and uh, uh, find out what they're doing and maybe get involved with them because we we want people to be. Uh, involved in what's going on in the world today. And this is one way we do it. So this is a conference for people that are looking to get involved in Liberty here, um, not just in Kentucky, but anywhere around kind of, kind of figuring out how things work, how things go. And, and people can go, they can buy your tickets at, uh, at a website. I'm, I'm assuming uh, producer Nick, do you have a website? He's got a website, constitutional Kentucky, all spelled out. Apparently constitutional KY.com was taken. Uh, constitutional Kentucky, all spelled out. dot com is uh, is up for. Sorry, Nick's laughing at me for making a terrible joke. Um, is is there, and you can go. You can fi- buy your tickets uh, there. As far as it goes, how much are tickets? Tickets tickets are actually a hundred dollars, and we do okay. have scholarships available for students. They're they're fifty dollars. Scholarships are available. Now, for that $100, I get to hear the speakers. Um, do I get anything else? Do I get food? Do I get Do I get any yeah. fun? You, you got a uh, continental breakfast. You've got uh, – Continental, uh, huh? Well, what are you going to call it? We'll have, we'll have donuts. <laughs> How many <laughs> continents? One course. continent? <laughs> You're yeah. like, listen, it's got there a French go. pastry, okay? It's continental breakfast. There you go. <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a diverse hey, breakfast. This is what they said it serves. So, you know, but it'll be it'll be a good day. Uh, there'll be breaks. You'll get to see a lot of good people. And, uh, you know, and do you get lunch, is, too? You get lunch. And get it lunch. It's a uh, buffet breakfast. type lunch. But I think Speakers. you're going to realize this. You're going to be around people that are that are seeking to better themselves and better our state. And by doing so, by they're going to get to know each other, be able to reach out in their communities. That's what this is all about. Make communities stronger. Uh, kind of just like what you're doing. You're, you're building a, a very good program uh, in Lexington and across the state. And that's what we're trying to do, too, so that other people can go out and do the same thing. I mean, stronger. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, hey, thank you so much, Tony for joining us today, telling us about your event. We're going to go ahead and jump into the news, but thank you so much, Tony. And everybody sign up for the Leadership Conference. Um, If you're unable to go to that and you find yourself in Tennessee the same weekend, I am in Flat Rock, Tennessee for the Rogue Food Tour. Uh, So I'll be speaking at that with Thomas Massey. Um, But that is farther away than conservative uh, uh, conference leadership conferences. So, you know, there you guys go. Some of the different events are going on there the same day. Thank you so much though, for joining us, Tony. And we're going to jump into the news. All right. Thank you. Have a good evening. We'll see you, bud. All right, guys, there's Tony Wheatley joining us talking about the, uh, conference there. I want to remind everybody, please, please remind everybody. Literally Facebook is not even, if you've signed up, for notifications if you've signed up for notifications uh they are literally no longer 
um, even sending out notifications to people who've signed up for them on our Facebook page. So if, if you've previously signed up for notifications of lives, make sure you do it again. Um, and please, once again, hit that share button, hit it twice, share it to three places. You can share it to multiple places if you're on Facebook, um, you know, and help us break the algorithm there. But we're going to start digging into it. And, and let's go ahead. Let's dig into it here with um, John Cena. John Cena is deciding to go ahead and take a bow to the CCP, Chinese Communist Party. Apparently, he's decided that he hates America but uh, loves China. We're going to take a deep dive into this. Um, let's go ahead. Let's play this video here. Uh, here he is. Um, here he is uh, over there off well, that way. Um, he's, he's speaking in Chinese. Mandarin, sorry, not Chinese. Oh, I don't want to offend anybody. Uh, go ahead, hit play there. I love communism. No, that's not what it says. I'll tell you what it's saying. What he's saying is, is I am very, very sorry for my mistake. Um, sorry, sorry. I am very sorry. Um, I love China. I love and respect China. I'm very sorry for my mistake. Very sorry. Um, sorry, sorry. Very sorry. And uh, I love China. I love Chinese people. Must understand I love and respect China and Chinese people. Um, sorry. Goodbye. So there you go. He's bowing down to uh, China. Now, why is he bowing down to China? First off... Um, if you're if if you're watching on YouTube or if you guys go to our YouTube channel and our Facebook channel, um, we have that video there. Share it out. It has the subtitles and explains a little bit real quick what's going on. So for you to understand what that was about, John Cena did an interview. Um, let's see, he did an interview with, with a Taiwanese group and he says oh i love taiwan and he's doing the interview so fast nine is coming out john cena is in it also called f9 um because you know whatever that's what they do now fast and furious nine so they call it f9 um and so of course they're very excited to be able to release the movie in the chinese market i mean it's it's the what second most populated country in the world first most first most populated country in the world then it's india then it's us it's a big market of people it's a big people to sell movies to so hollywood you've seen capitulating to if you remember south park even did an episode where they're making jokes about how disney uh is just doing whatever china wants because they want that sweet sweet chinese money they want it. They want to bathe themselves in it. They don't care if it came from, uh, you know, I don't know, the Holocausting, Uyghur Muslims. They don't care if it comes from, you know, I don't know, blood money. They don't care if it comes from the fact that they're dirty, rotten communists. They don't care. All they care about is, hey, we want to make that money. And hey, you know what? It's a free market. It's an open market. I guess you can do that, right? I'm not advocating for the government to get involved here necessarily because I'm a liberty believer. But what happened was, is John Cena said, uh, yeah, called Taiwan, Taiwan a country. And China was upset. What's going on there? Well, America rec is, recognizes Taiwan as an independent, its own country, its independent territory. However, China, on the other hand, um, believes they own Taiwan and Taiwan's theirs. And they, they went into Taiwan um, before they're supposed to, and there's kind of a little bit of a tiff going on there. And they're trying to take it over. And so they're upset that John Cena recognized that Taiwan was a country. Let's remember, America recognizes that Taiwan was a country. So you just saw John Cena, a WWE wrestler, in a movie made in America. American, well, I don't know if it's made in America, but made from America's Hollywood, our movie industry. Remember, China isn't selling, well, I guess they sell us anime, don't they? No, Japan. Japan does. Yeah. Does China sell us any movies? I don't want to watch Chinese movies. Anyways, probably communist propaganda. But anyways, China, China um, made here in America, American foreign policy, American citizen. And he's over here apologizing in Chinese for recognizing Taiwan as a country. First off, Taiwan's a country. It's a country. You need to stand up and say, Taiwan's a country. China shouldn't be invading them. Every country deserves to be on their own. Now, once again, I said this earlier, I'm not asking for government to get involved. However, however, 
What I am saying is we need to stand up and say, no more Hollywood. Are you going to get to take the American market for granted? You want to bow to the CCP in China? Go to the CCP. You go to China. I see how you enjoy communism. You go there. We don't want you here. We don't want you here. It's a simple way for the amazing free market. You know, in China, they could probably mandate everybody go see your movie. I guess if that's what you're going for. But here in America, we can choose not to go to your movie. And if we set up a dichotomy where Hollywood has to choose whether or not they want to um, the Chinese market or America's market, then that's the choice they should have to make. That's the choice they should have to make. And so what I'm saying is, is that we should be pushing forward if 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 you believe taiwan's a country if you believe in american foreign policy if you believe in freedom if you're against communism you should be pushing forward and pushing against f9 and we should be saying hey we're going to boycott f9 and you know what the fast and furious movies kind of suck anyways right they started going downhill right around five or six that was the world's longest runway in that one movie where they're driving down the runway and they're trying to like board the plane that runway was so long and you know what they're crappy movies they've been crappy movies for the last couple times now we keep showing up to them because we're like manja manja give us the crappy movies because that's what we've been saying and maybe it's time to start saying, no, you know what? We're not going to eat your crappy movies if you're, if you're going to sit there and bow to the CCP. Pick your markets. That's a free market way to deal with this because we certainly, we certainly can't and shouldn't rely on our government to decide how we interact with one another, how we interact, too, with other markets. And the reason why I'm saying that, outside of saying, hey, we need to make sure we're defending ourselves in the sense of not importing um you know letting other countries send nukes here or something crazy like that uh, a simple national defense type thing but the reason why is because the american market is very powerful in the sense that if we decide we don't want to do business with you guys anymore we don't want to do business anymore and listen guys china has said openly said just a few weeks ago that they are in a cold war they didn't make america specifically but china said i am in a cold war and I tell you this much, if our Hollywood actors are capitulating to their foreign policy while we are in a cold war with China, that doesn't bode well for how this is going to turn out for us. And we got to circle these wagons. So I encourage you, if you're on Facebook, we got a Facebook video about it. If you're on YouTube, go on YouTube, share it, share the video, share the hashtag, go onto our Twitter. We've got to post it up there, share it out with the hashtag hashtag boycott f9 and and let's make it clear let's make it clear that we're not going to watch movies that care more about china's market than they care about america's market care about what america has to say additionally we have uh, facebook coming out saying they're ending the ban on post claiming covid 19 is man-made so if you guys remember uh just a short short while ago like i don't know less than six months ago it was considered uh, a racist. Um, it was also considered uh, a conspiracy. It was considered incorrect. And it was considered a terrible, no good, very bad thing if you made the claim that the virus was man-made in China. You weren't allowed or supposed to say that on the Facebooks. However, Facebook has decided to change their mind on it as there's mounting and mounting evidence. Remember, Rand Paul kind of first brought this forward. But mounting and mounting evidence making the statement that COVID was man-made in the Wuhan China lab, and it leaked out. Now, there's a lot of debate, uh, I guess, right now. Did it leak out? Did it not leak out? I mean, that's a good conversation. There's, there's one point to either side, right? So it depends on what China's goal was. Um, if China's goal is to release it as a bioweapon um, in the sense of killing people, one, you think they would have released a little bit more deadly of a virus. I mean, you know, I'm not saying people don't die from COVID. People 100% die from COVID, but the mortality rate is, is not super high. It's pretty easy to figure out who's at risk, who isn't, right? And so you have to imagine that that's the first reason why you would think China did not try to release this on purpose as a bioweapon. The other reason you might think that is because 
it was released into their own country first. If I'm running a country and I'm trying to put out a bioweapon, um, I would not release it in my own country. I would release it in somebody else's country. And so that's the argument to say maybe this was just an accident. Now, of course, it looks like, too, America was helping fund that lab. So, so, and that's part of the problem as well is was America funding gain of function research in China on a virus that then escaped in China and then spread amongst the population? Um, you know, that's, that's a big question. Now, the argument that they did do it on purpose is, well, you know, a virus that isn't necessarily super high mortality we've just seen can easily cripple an economy. And if you're China and you're trying to just cripple economies to win in the the fight, um, I guess the global fight there, the global economic fight, uh, maybe that's a good way to do it. I don't know. I guess that's up for debate. You know, let me know what you feel. If you want to send me a message about it, send me a message about it. You know, follow us on Telegram too as well. You can comment on there on stuff. Um, we post a little bit better content. If you're a follower of ours, you're not following us on Telegram, then you're not really following us at all because we post a different content and uh, a lot, some not edgier in the sense of like, you know, it's still my good old fashioned wholesome content, but it is uh, content that certainly, certainly uh, is different. And I'm willing to post things that isn't necessarily uh, allowed on Facebook there. Um, so please follow us there on telegram um so they changed their mind now do you think this changes facebook's policies when it comes to covid at all do you think they'll be like you know what remember when we were banning a viewpoint because it was dangerous and crazy and wasn't following the science and then it turned out to be true maybe maybe one science is never settled maybe two more things than we thought are up for debate maybe three Facebook, the CDC, and the federal government aren't always exactly the foremost authority on what's true and what's not. Maybe, just maybe, they would change their mind about all their other COVID policies, maybe about the vaccine or about other things. Don't hold your breath, guys. We all know Facebook ain't changing their mind. They're not going to admit that they were wrong to ban the material that they banned priorly that turned out to be true. They're not going to admit that. They're never going to admit that. Why'd they admit it? Well, you know, it doesn't fit the narrative. We're going to ban things that don't fit the narrative, even if they're true. In fact, if you guys remember in our last episode or so, two, two episodes, last episode, we took a deep dive on the user agreement of Facebook where they outwardly admit they will ban information that is true, stories and stuff that are true, but if it causes vaccine hesitancy, they're going to downgrade it. They're going to shadow ban it. They're going to get rid of it. Will Facebook change their mind? No. They're not going to change their mind. They'll just say, oh, we're changing up our, our, our policy on it and go along our way. So there you go. Well, guys, I, I also noticed um, the other day, and this was a Salon article, called America's right wing political monsters are real and they are coming for you. And I'm going to dive deep into this article real quick, but please hit that share button for us. If you're just joining us, hit that share button. And of course, the article starts off with a picture of an individual. I'm going to be honest, looking at who's wearing the Make America Great Again hat, I would have pegged that individual for a liberal every day of the week. Blue hair, face piercings. If I saw... That individual walking down a street um, right there. Yeah, that individual. Yeah, right there holding that flag. Uh, I would have assumed they were a liberal, but, you know, I'm not trying to generalize, but I would have assumed that. And, of course, it's a QAnon conspiracy theory flag. Now, first off, do we know the guy next to this individual? Does does he um, – and if, if you don't know why I keep calling that person individual, I'm just – I don't want to misgender. Oh, um, but <laughs> – um, I have not asked that individual what their pronouns are, and so it is not my place to make that call. Um, but the guy next to this individual, uh, have we asked him if he's on board the QAnon conspiracy? I don't know. Um, he's not wearing any QAnon badge. Maybe this one individual showed up uh, at a rally holding a QAnon flag. But, of course, the, the title under Salon for this picture is a person holds a banner. Refer, I guess they didn't know either. 
preferring to the QAnon conspiracy theory during an alt-right rally. What is an alt-right rally? I don't know. I guess if you talk about anything uh, at all, it's an alt-right rally that isn't to the left. But let's deep, deep dive into this article that comes from the fever dreams of one crazy, crazy liberal. America's national mythology is a story of inexorable progress. This narrative of progress is also a tale of hope constructed on the belief that American people are inherently good. In addition, America's national mythology is a story of perpetual reinvention, intentional forgetting and rewriting of the past, where democracy is taken to be a given and a special bequest to the American people from God. And of course, the American people in the country itself are somehow exceptional among the nations and peoples of the world. So at first, they're going to roll out the talking point that America is no good, very bad place. Now let's talk about this, okay? America is the third largest country. Third largest country. But somehow is still the richest in the world. Everybody wants to do business in America. In fact, we're told we're very no good, bad people. If we're not willing to let anybody into America that wants to be here. But I asked this writer if it's such a no good, very bad, terrible, awful, terrible, no good, terrible, crappy place. Why is it a humanitarian effort to let in illegal immigrants? Wouldn't it be the opposite of a humanitarian effort? Wouldn't the liberals be standing at the border? This person writing this article, shouldn't they be standing right now at the Mexican border? Be like, go back. It's terrible here. Don't come here. It's racist. And everybody's dying of no health care. No, instead they berate us for not following along with the idea that letting everybody in is a, a somehow a, a terrible uh, humanitarian crisis, which, listen, you know, we've talked about immigration before. I personally believe it should be uh, pretty easy to come to the country and work, pay taxes, everything else. It should be difficult to become a citizen. It should be difficult to be able to take advantage of, of welfare programs. Um, you know, Mexico, Canada, uh, they have similar immigration policies that say if at any point within the first 10 years of being here, you require to go on government assistance of any kind, we have to uh, um, deport you back to the country you came from. Um, you know, those types of things, um, you know, those types of, of policies, I think, are very good. Let's background check people as they come in, make sure we know who's coming in and out, secure our border so we know who's coming in and out. But if they want to come join the labor market and compete on the same level as the rest of us, me as a free market individual says, hey, that's a OK. So I want to make that clear. But this individual thinks that uh, America is no good, very bad place, but illegal immigrants uh, should still be allowed in. Let's continue in their article. These claims wither away under any serious empirical investigation or historical inquiry. Does it now? They say that's why they are myths. It's not facts which give myths the force of the meaning, but rather the way people internalize them and make them true for themselves and the larger community. If you do any serious empirical investigation, you'll find America is a very good, no bad place. Actually, if you do an investigation, you'll find that America has consistently, at every time of its existence, been one of the freest countries in the world, winning comparison to the rest of the world at that time. So as long as we've remained consistently freer than every other country in the world, is it a myth that America, the claim that America is exceptional among nations, whether or ways under serious empirical investigation? Once again, you know that just isn't true. Yet your constant attack on America is undermining its very existence and creating and giving truth to this conspiracy that they have, that the liberals have, that America is the worst country on the state. In, in, I'm sorry, worst country in the world. But we continue on in the article. Even the more sophisticated popular understandings of American history, they include the fact the country is a racial settler state founded on the evils of genocide against First Nations people and the enslavement of black people, in which white democracy was the ideal norm, still emphasizes an arc of progress and positive change. In those more nuanced stories, America is an imperfect union that is always striving, however difficult and complicated, 
the work may be to become a better nation. Okay. That seems pretty accurate to me. Once again, can pair us, if you want to do an empirical study, let's do an empirical study into once again what every other countries were doing at that same time. Because I'm sorry, I'm not going to let you rewrite the history of our country of being a country that has always been a beacon of the freest place in the world. Once again, you're not going to get to rewrite history. But of course, as we continue reading, we're going to see their desire to rewrite history gets even worse. The age of Trump shattered many of these myths. It was revealed that fascism is not something over there, but a toxic weed that can blossom in the United States. Black and brown folks and other marginalized people already understood this fact. White supremacy is in itself a form of racial fascism, fascism sorry, and authoritarianism. Such an understanding has been obligatory for their survival. But many white Americans and others who have bathed in the privilege of racial innocence were godsmacked by the Trump's regime's relentless attack on the country's democracy rule of law, civil society, and governing norms and institutions. Governing norms and institutions. Normal. Foreign wars. Normal. Drone strikes on our own citizens. Normal. Reduction of rights. This coming from the same people that say Trump is attacking democracy. This coming from the same people that say Trump was a rise of authoritarianism. But yet their call and their fix to this is to make the government bigger. You know what? If their solution, I could almost get on board with all this gobbledygook nonsense. If their solution was let's make the government smaller, so if somebody like Trump grabs a hold of it, it can't do everything terrible it's always done. If somebody, if, if they want to say that, though I disagree with that sentiment, but they want to say that, and then the solution would be, let's make our government smaller, I could almost like be like, yeah, sure, like I don't agree with the reason, but we're on board with the solution. We're on board that the government should be smaller because authoritarianism or whatever you think, and I think the government's bad at everything. So if that's the case, if we agree on that, then we can move forward. But no, their solution, of course, is no, we need a bigger government with the right people in charge. Whoever this person believes is the right person in charge. In so many ways, the calamity of the age of Trump has seen the story of inherent American progress, the goodness of its people, and the permanence of the country's democracy run into a brick wall. First off, we're a republic, okay? This constant thing about attack and democracy, everything else. We're not actually a democratic nation. We are not a majority rule nation. We're a republic. There are certain rules and regulations certain set out by the Constitution that you cannot violate even if the majority wants to. We're not a democracy. A true and complete democracy would be if the majority of people vote, they want to take my stuff, they can take my stuff. However, the Constitution limits that kind of action. But we'll continue. The American people can no longer deny that political monsters are real. These monsters want to overthrow America's secular and multiracial democracy and replace it with an American apothard, apartheid plutocracy. The monsters want to take away the basic human and civil rights of non-white people, women, LGBT people, immigrants, liberals, and progressives, along with any others they deem to be un-American and the enemy. What now? Can they name uh uh name one law that specifically says we're taking away the rights of LGBT people, non-white people, women, immigrants, liberals, progressives? Can you name a law? A law. Of course, they're going to point to laws like, well, you know, they've got this law here in this state that is making it legal for a person of different uh, initial births genders to go into this bathroom versus that bathroom is that a basic human and civil right i mean it's not actually a basic human right to get to use the bathroom 
Like it is like if you're in prison or something, but I, I, I just want to make that clear. That you do not have a right. Like, all the time, you walk into a gas station, they'll be like, no public restrooms. Do you start yelling your basic and human and civil rights have been violated because the gas station won't let you use their bathrooms? No. Now, you can say, I don't agree with that, and I think there's a good argument there, perhaps, that we can talk about. You can say something like, I believe that they should be allowed to do it, but it's not a basic human and civil right. And that's the wonderful thing, too. If it, if it was such a popular idea, as you're claiming, because you're claiming that democracy, which is majority rule, would make it to where these things are true, true democracy. Well, that's the biggest endorsement for the free market I've ever seen. If you're saying the majority of people would endorse this belief, then the majority of companies, most companies, would go ahead and do it because that's the best thing to keep it going. But we'll continue. Across the country, this monstrous agenda is well underway. For all the Biden's administration's early successes, oh my gosh. What are they? Can you point to a success the Biden administration has? Well, he's beat COVID. Did he? Because he didn't. Like, if you read Biden's COVID plan, like, none of it he had to do. All he had to do was keep Trump's vaccine program running. To give you an idea, you know, Biden's plan was to make sure the federal government got proper PPE out everywhere. Have you seen an article about Biden's administration ensuring and making sure hospitals had proper PPE? No, it was never a problem in the first place at this point. They all had PPE at this point. It wasn't an issue. But of course, they can't point to his successes, but they'll claim that he's had a wonderful success. They, but we'll, we'll continue. Biden's successes, they occur under the ominous shadow of a right-wing terror dome. Now nearing completion for 2022 and 24 and beyond. Trump's coup attempt and his followers' attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th is but a preview of what is to come. Trump's coup attempt? I think it's pretty clear what Trump said in the videos. He did not tell them to go sack the Capitol. He said, go protest peacefully. And if that was the attack on the U.S. Capitol was a coup, worse coup ever. They, they, I don't even think they had guns. Do they have guns? Uh, most of the ones that infiltrated the Capitol did not. No, most of the people that went to the Capitol did not even have guns. Worst coup ever. Worst coup ever. I want my money back. I want my money back. That's the worst coup ever. We continue, though. The alarm about America's monstrous politics is being rung loudly. How will the American people respond? Writing at the Daily Beast, Ali describes these right-wing monsters and their agenda. This is fantastic. Let's listen to what Ali says. There is no civil war in the Republican Party. The Confederates won long ago. Woo, doggy! Democrats claiming the Confederates won long ago in the Republican Party. Let's see here. If I was to pass a motion... In Congress that said any political party that ever had slavery as a part of their platform can no longer operate in politics, the Republicans would still remain. The Democrats would not. It is some high and mighty speech about how the Republican Party is controlled by Confederates when the party of the Confederacy was the Democrat Party. As some high and mighty words coming from the most racist party according to its history in the country. But of course it's okay when the Democrats rewrite their history. When they rewrite themselves being the party of slavery. That's fine. They can rewrite that. But you know. If you say, hey, America was imperfect, it had its issues, but it's always been the freest country in the world. They say, well, <laughs> that's a myth. You're rewriting history. Well, you know what? You are the slave owners. Democrats, you own the slaves. You want to rewrite history? You want to say the sins of the past are the sins of the present? Guess what? The Republicans freed the slaves. You were the slaveholders. You guys are the ones who are racist in this case. You are. That's history. 
Who do you think was beating them at Selma? You think it was Republicans or do you think it was Democrats? Because I got to tell you, that wasn't that long ago and there's a lot of D's next to those names. But anyways. <clears throat> Instead, we are witnessing the end of a long molting process as the GOP slithers into its final form, a counter-majoritarian fascist entity. Republicans are shedding their masks and hoods. First off, the majority, once again, doesn't matter. We are a republic. And fascism, real quick, just, just let's look up here. Definition of fascism. Here you go. Webster Dictionary. Here you go. Fascism is a political philosophy movement or regime that exalts nation and often race above the individual. Or they want me to support the dictionary. No, thank you. <laughs> that exalts nation often race above the individual and that stands for a centralized autocratic government headed by a dictatorial leader which party wants bigger government uh which party uh is the party where they divide people up into race and they talk about race over the individual Which party, I mean, they talk about the nation a lot. They talk about how crappy it is, but, you know, they do talk about the nation a lot. Severe economic and social regimentation. Severe economic and social regimentation. Who wants you to be able to have more of your money in your pocket? Who wants you to have a smaller government that has spent as many, much of your tax dollars? And forcible suppression of opposition. They're literally in this article talking about suppressing a viewpoint they don't like. The irony is lost on them. They are the fascist entity. They are the entity of slavery. The, the race has always mattered to the Democratic Party. And it never has stopped. They've never changed. They just wrap their racism in helping others. When all it is is really continued racism. T continue, though. Republicans are shedding their masks and hoods. Once again, who was the party of the KKK? Who was it? If you guessed Democrat, you would be saying the truth. <laughs> because they're the party of the KKK. Like, 90% of the KKK was Democrats. I mean, if you guys remember, the KKK didn't even like Trump. You guys remember that? No, of course not. That didn't make big news, did it? We continue, Trump was not a cancerous growth, but the end product of the party's decades-long molting process. He is the beating heart, his Republicans' orange avatar. Their unrestrained ID, their boiling, festering rage that quenches its appetites while securing power and wealth by any means necessary. Democracy, rule of law, equality, fairness, voting rights are all unnecessary, cumbersome obstacles that must be either removed or weakened to achieve the ultimate goal, power for an overwhelmingly white, Christian, conservative minority. Is it the minority? The Republican Party, a few outliers, like, this is, this is real good, real good. The Republican Party, a few outliers, like, Representative Liz Cheney and Senator Mitt Romney belong to is dead. Okay. What? Rewind. Going back to the prior paragraph he said trump was not a cancerous growth but the end product of the party's decades-long molting process before trump who was our last presidential candidate mitt romney the last republican president's vice president was liz cheney's dad i thought this was a decades-long process yet you're holding up liz cheney and mitt romney as these wonderful strange new respect republicans almost forgetting that they were our last presidential candidate before Trump, daughter of our last vice president before Trump. But it's been going on for decades, guys. Isn't it funny how they claim the Republican Party is the one who wants to rewrite history? Yet they can't even get 20, the last 20 years right. It's over, gone. The final molting stage of the new party will produce an entity that openly supports violent insurrections, lies, conspiracy theories, authoritarians, and racists. 
and will attack democracy, voting rights, the rule of law, our allies, and the truth. Our allies? Which side was on the side of Israel, which is our ally? Anyways, I'm going to put that to the side. I, that's an obvious answer. Everybody knows the answer of who's supporting our allies and who's not. If you mean by supporting our allies, the Republicans don't want to spend gobs of money over to foreign entities, you would be correct. I guess that means we're not supporting them. Tom Hartman warns that the Jim Crow Republican Party, Jim Crow Republican Party, once again, Democrats, and the Trump's neo-fascist movement are led by psychopaths and encourage antisocial behavior. Who are the ones who are saying, stay home, stay lives, don't get near people, wear masks, don't go out, don't go to work? The libertarians. No, it was the Democrats. Oh, okay. The Democrats were doing it. Good job, Nick. Good try. It was the Democrats, and the Republicans were the ones throwing a fit that they couldn't see their family. So, you know, that makes more sense to be antisocial, I guess. But anyways. For America to survive as a democratic republic, it's... The Republic, but okay. We must restore the legal guardrails that keep psychopaths from entering, controlling, or buying our political process. Oh, once again, their 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 solution to an authoritarian government? More government. That's the answer. It's like they came to a conclusion and worked backwards. <laughs> The former guy and those in Congress who encourage and continue to badly lie about January 6th insurrection attempt to account. To reduce the power of psychopaths and politics, we must pass the For the People Act or similar legislation that psychopaths proves our political system. We must stop them from continuing their efforts to rig the 2024 election. Remember, guys, where are the conspiracy theorists? We're talking about the rigged 2020 election. They're three years out, and they're already talking about how the 2024 election will be rigged. If they don't get the results they want, they're already saying the 2024 election is rigged. But whatever. They go on. The monstrous politics that have taken over the Trump-controlled Republican Party are global in scale addressing the strange political self immunization of the British working class. Now, is it possible? You're literally stating that everybody else in the world is wrong and you are right. Is it possible you're the wrong one? Is it possible, just possible, that if it's happening all across the world, it's not a Trump Republican Party in America problem? I mean, your own statements prove your arguments to be wrong that you just made. But of course, it's not exactly like consistency is the crazy liberals' strong suit. <sighs> Addressing the strange political self immunization of the British working class, long reliable vote for left wing parties and candidates, but now voting for its own self destruction. Maybe they're just unhappy with what's going on. If you're a working class, you need these following things healthcare, retirement, affordable education, childcare, housing, and so on. The British working class began to flip conservative in 20, 2007 and is now solidly ultra-conservative. Why is that? Because the conservatives have convinced them that demonizing and scapegoating everyone else, foreigners, immigrants, and all those hated metropolitan elite Europeans for the lack of a functioning society matters more than having a functioning society. So they're saying, well, it went conservative because we were failing to deliver the things they wanted. And so they blamed us for it. But that is wrong, and we don't like it. The problem isn't the Labor Party. It's not politics at all. It's people. Brits have become violent, selfish, backwards idiots. You know how American idiot is a legendary figure around the world? Welcome to the British buffoon. He's a figure that doesn't care about anything, will accept any level of indignity, any collapse in living standards, as long as he gets to wave the Union Jack, shake a fist at the world, and sing Britannia Uber Ellis. I don't know what that song is, but whatever. What happens when people fail at democracy like this? Well, it's simple. Democracy fails. Society becomes a failed state. Not in the way we're used to thinking, but in a softer, altogether more dangerous way. Consensually, a country commits suicide as a modern functioning society, not with a bang, but with a million whimpers, shrieks of rage, howls of xenophobia, guttered snarls on nationalism, and soon there's nothing left but poverty, despair, rage, and hate. Now, I got to ask you guys a question. When I say the words, where is a place... 
That's poverty, despair, rage, and hate. Who leads those areas in America? Is it Republicans? Or is it elitist liberals? They're like, hey, we're not giving you the thing you're asking for, the thing we're telling you you need, so you're going and voting for someone else. Why are you doing that? I don't even finish the last three, three paragraphs of them going on and say Trump hates everybody, everybody hates everybody. Here's the bottom line. Here is the bottom line. They don't like that we're starting to play their own games. They don't like that people like me exist that put their businesses on the line and can flourish. They don't like how individuals are taking a stand. They don't like how you're starting to vote with your dollars. They don't like that you are pushing back. They don't like it. They want you to stop. And I tell you guys this much right now, the next fight is on the horizon. It is mandated vaccines. University of Louisville here in Kentucky has already mandated them. And we need to continue to come together. We need to continue to fight. Because everybody, everybody has the right to be left alone. Support us. Buy our coffee. Broodco.com. Have a great evening.